Welcome to night number 46 of History Bedtime Stories in bed in our pajamas. Tonight, let's talk about the first man to ever go 100 miles an hour over water and the guy who invented the trash truck as we know it today, Garfield Arthur Wood more commonly called by his nickname, Gar Wood. Now, Gar Wood is born outside of Detroit. He's actually born December 4th, 1880 in Iowa. He's one of 13 siblings to a father who operates ferries on a lake in Minnesota. Gar starts working at a pretty young age and in uh, his 17th year, he develops a downriver carburetor for his inspection boat, making him one of the fastest men on a waterway in Minnesota. He takes some of those earnings and turns them into the Wood Hoist Company, which he establishes here in Detroit in 1911 at the age of 31. Its landmark invention is the hydraulic lift for unloading coal from railroad cars. Before Garwood's 1911 patent, railroads would drive uh, locomotives pulling all of the cars into train yards, and then workers would have to climb up into those train cars and with shovels manually unload the coal payload. Garwood changes all of that with his hydraulic lift for unloading, basically allowing the car in to lift itself up from the back and dump the load, making it much more efficient, much more safe, and much more um, uh, cost saving for the railroad companies. He eventually changes the name of the Wood Hoist Company to Garwood Industries, and he starts making race boats, pleasure boats, the uh, hydraulic unloader, coach bodies, truck bodies, tractors, uh, tractor attachments, and by the time World War II rolls around, he's producing tugboats and target craft for the Navy. He holds more inventions in 1946 than any other living American had patented at 197 registered patents and another six under investigation at the time the New York Times proclaims him the man with more patents than anyone living in America today. But of all of them, the one that might have changed all of our lives the most is his 1938 garbage truck compactor called the Garwood Load Packer. This is the garbage truck as we all know it today, a garbage truck that has a compactor in the back to systematically smash down the load the truck is carrying, allowing one garbage truck to collect refuse from three times the amount of houses and businesses as a previous truck was able to. The truck uh, goes into wide production following the end of World War II, and by 1950, one out of every one and a half trash collecting trucks in North America is produced here in Detroit at Garwood Industries. As all this is happening though, Garwood not only becomes a multimillionaire, he becomes a racing legend. In 1916, he buys a powerboat named Miss Detroit, and for good measure, he buys the company that built it. It was um, owned by two men, Chris and Henry Smith, and as part of the purchase deal, they stay on to work for Garwood until 1922. In 1922, Chris splits off and he opens Chris Smith and Sons Boat Company, which he renames just 18 months later, Chris Craft, one of the most famous boat manufacturers in the world. And now you've got Garwood Industries going up against Chris Craft. In 1920, Garwood breaks the water speed record going 74.8 miles per hour on the Detroit River, racing the Twin Liberty V12 Miss America. Over the next 12 years, he'd build nine more Miss Americas. The fastest one in 1932, going 124.86 miles per hour on Lake St. Clair. In 1921, um, he decides to sort of do this spectacle, this showmanship activity of racing a train from Miami to New York. Yep, Eastern Seaboard. He is going to get in his boat and race the ninth Miss America along the Eastern Seaboard in competition with a train. He ends up winning by 12 minutes, completing the journey in 47 hours and 23 minutes total. 
he enjoys the publicity so much that in 1925, he sort of repeats the idea, racing the fastest American train, the 20th Century Limited train, from um, Albany to New York along the Hudson River, and he beats that train by 22 minutes and 11 seconds. He won five straight powerboat gold cup races from 1917 to 1921 on the Detroit River. He wins the um, Hemsworth Trophy nine times. He, when the city of Detroit receives recognition as the city of champions in 1936, there's this huge banquet. People come from all over the country and the White House presents the city of Detroit with a plaque calling it the city of champions. It features five medallions embedded into the plaque and you bet your bottom dollar that motorboat racer, that's Garwood. He is uh, very, very successful with all of this publicity and is able to start selling motorboats through his Garwood Industries. The Baby Gar, which was a gentleman's racer, and a runabout version become his two most popular. But the company goes on to produce lines and lines and lines of boats with a lot of popularity among racers because they were able to be changed and modified to meet their requirements for if they were river racers, open ocean racers, or Great Lakes racers. In um, 1971, on June 16th, at the age of 90, Garwood passes away in Miami, Florida. His body is transported back to his beloved Michigan, where it's buried outside of his home in Algonac, Michigan. The Detroit News uh, writes his obituary and it's a lovely telling of the life, inventions, racing, and times of Garwood, but they conclude with this quote, to the public, he was Tom Swift, Jules Verne, Frank Merriwell, and a little bit of Horatio Elger thrown in. Garwood remains uh, well-known and well-loved here in the city of Detroit. The Detroit Yacht Club has one of its overnight suites named the Garwood Suite in his honor, as well as his oil painting uh, hanging in both the Detroit Boat Club and the Detroit Yacht Club. I hope you've been enjoying History Bedtime Stories. We'll see you tomorrow night at 8. And if you tag two friends down in the comment section below, we will enter you into a raffle to win a whole bunch of City of Detroit vinyl stickers, which we'll mail out next week. Remember to like us on Facebook and Instagram. Wash your hands.